Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is Sandra and I make videos all about cybersecurity as well as different career topics. And today we're going to be continuing our cybersecurity job series and we'll be discussing all things malware analysis. So I debated between making a video on malware analysis and malware prevention because they are two very different things. But I also think that not all companies have specific malware prevention or malware analysis teams. So if you're interested in these roles, you're definitely a lot more niche. And they also require a more niche skill set. And as always, if you guys found this video helpful or liked it, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to help other people find this video as well. All right, so going into the world of malware analysis, I think it's definitely one of the most in-depth technical roles in cybersecurity. So at the very basic level, starting with what is malware, if you think about it in very basic terms, malware is really just a program that was developed to have some kind of malicious intent, whether it be stealing data, encrypting some set of data, deleting some set of data, altering it in some way or viewing it, or maybe gaining access to some privileged user's account running some kind of command, remote code execution, which by the way, I made a video recently on the log4j attack, and I can link that video down below if you want to get a more detailed view on how remote code execution is possible. And as shown in the log4shell exploit, sometimes very easy to do. So yeah, malware is essentially just a computer program that sadly has some kind of malicious intent. And a malware analysis is exactly what it sounds like. It is the study of the malware program itself, as well as the origins of where it came from, what language is built on, being able to understand the potential impact of the malware itself, whether it be a worm, a virus, a Trojan horse, a backdoor, a rootkit. There's so many different kinds of malwares out there, and, and it's really helpful to know the differences between all of them. Most people in cybersecurity are likely not going to have to need in-depth knowledge about, about the types of malware, how they get installed, how they are run, whether or not they need some kind of user interaction to take over or expand into various different systems or devices across your company or your network. But there's many different use cases for all kinds of malware. And as a malware analyst, you're going to be spending a lot of time either reverse engineering certain malware and understanding what the actual functionality of the code is actually supposed to be doing. And then you are in turn taking all that information to try to understand what the attacker is trying to get out of your company using this code. Like I mentioned earlier, there's so many different things that attacker could want to do, whether it's tampering with some kind of data, stealing it, etc. There's so many different things that the attacker might want. And that is the main reason why companies perform malware analysis, because they want to understand what the attackers are thinking, what they actually want to do. And if there is malware that gets into your system, then obviously there's some kind of control that is either missing or is not working correctly that allowed this malware through into, into one of your endpoint machines, into one of your sites, one of your application servers and you wanna understand how it was able to bypass certain controls to actually get into your system. So there's so many different things that go into malware analysis, but at a high level, it's definitely a very technical role. I believe this is probably one of the most technical roles that I've made a video on in this cyber career series. So jumping right into the skills portion of this video of the skills and tools that you may need to be successful in this role. The main skill, honestly, is being able to learn how to code. Um, you probably have to have an intermediate, probably even an advanced background in development in some kind of popular language that malware is commonly written in. So most malware that's created and found in the wild is usually written in C or C++. However, that does not mean that all malware is written in C and C++. It could be written in Java, Python, Go. There's so many different languages that that malicious actors are writing malware in now. So even though I do think it's a good reason to learn C or C++, it'll still be helpful if you're someone who has experience in Java, C Sharp, and Python. Even in older languages like Perl or PHP, malware could be written in technically any of these languages. It just so happens that C or C++ is one of the most common ones because in the past they've been more commonly used in malware, but you'll find that more and more malware is being written in other newer languages where the people who are actually writing the malware, if they write malware programs in languages that aren't as common, then malware detection or prevention Basically, antivirus applications like malware bytes, they aren't able to detect the actual malware in certain programs because it's not written in common languages like C or C++ and because it's not written in a more typical language. Newer malware that's written in different languages or more niche languages are getting through these, these antivirus softwares because they're just not able to detect them yet. And by the way, I also made a video previously on the top seven coding languages to learn for cybersecurity. I can link that below if you guys are interested in checking that out. 
But yeah, essentially there's pluses to learning the C, C++, the previously more common languages to learn for malware analysis, doing any kind of reverse engineering. But there's also a good reason to learn newer languages that are being used to write malware because more and more of the bad people who are writing malware programs are finding that these exotic languages that less and less people know and understand are able to get away with writing malware in those languages because first they're able to get through antivirus software there's also less malware analysts out there that can understand these languages or use them fluently in a way where they understand what they're trying to do, where the origins of the malware are coming from, basically how to reverse engineer this malware. So because of that, actually diversifying the languages that you do know is really important if you're someone who is interested in going into malware analysis because in a few years, there may be another language that is popular for writing malware in and you'll likely be expected to follow the trend of what these malicious actors are writing their code in. So that is why I say that coding is probably the number one skill that you need for this job and being able to write code well as well as understand other people's code. Sorry, the lighting is changing drastically. So aside from having a very good coding skills, you'll also likely need to use some tools that are used commonly for malware analysis, specifically disassemblers, debuggers, different hex editors, or even tools like Yara. That's basically a rules-based approach in trying to detect and find malware. Popular examples of this are IDA Pro, Jidra, the X64 debugger, HXD, PE Bear, and a bunch of other tools out there that are also open source and free to use. So you can actually use it for free on your own device if you want to. And the best way to get your own experience into malware analysis is really doing some labs yourself on one of your own boxes or machines so you can actually attempt to try to reverse engineer a malware yourself. Hands-on experience in this specific role and this field itself is going to be really important because you have to know how to use the tools as well as knowing the basic coding skills needed to understand what malware is doing. All right, so next let's go into education, background experience, any certifications that are needed for a malware analysis role. So I actually mentioned this in a previous video it was the cyber threat intelligence analyst one if you guys remember but i mentioned that if there was a role that was more technical that may require more foundational knowledge of computer science or or understanding how compilers work or understanding or understanding how code is packaged compiled all of that that you don't necessarily really delve into at all in a boot camp it would probably be a role like malware analysis that would need a degree and and likely an advanced degree so if you're looking at malware analysis rules, you'll probably find that a lot of them are looking for are looking for either, like I mentioned earlier, a advanced degree in computer science, in cybersecurity, in malware, something that is more technical than you would get at just a six month boot camp, or they're looking for years of experience to match that. Some malware analysis roles might be looking for five to 10 years of experience. So it's definitely not a role that you would start out in unless you're just a whiz at reverse engineering and you've done it in your free time, you've done your personal projects, it's something that you're really passionate about and you have your own personal projects to back yourself up, then maybe there may be an entry level role in that team where, where you might be able to shadow and be a more junior member to learn from other people on that team. But for the most part, getting into malware analysis really does start with having a good foundational knowledge of, of coding, computer science, debuggers, compilers, understanding how code is run, packaged, like I mentioned earlier, understanding how you can take apart something that is already developed into a computer program and break it down into the code that it's actually written in and understanding what it does. So even though I normally say that you don't require a degree for a lot of cybersecurity roles, I do think that an advanced degree would be a lot more helpful for this role relative to other roles in cybersecurity security because you're doing something so niche and of course you can get that experience yourself if you really wanted to but companies out there may still be looking for advanced degrees for example a master's degree or even a phd especially if you're going into a sector that focuses a lot on malware aka government or defense contractors or big tech those are areas that may be heavily focused on trying to reverse engineer malware but there are definitely going to be roles out there that only require a bachelor's degree maybe even no degree at all so it really depends on what company you're going into and the sector that you're going into and the type of malware analysis that you'll be doing so as for certifications the most popular certification that i've seen out there is a grem or the GIAC reverse engineering malware certification so GIAC is definitely one of the most popular organizations that provide certifications in cybersecurity, specifically in digital forensics and incident response so i would definitely look into this certification specifically if you're looking to expand your knowledge in malware and reverse engineering malware 
But of course, in roles like this, hands-on experience is always the number one thing that trumps anything, even certifications, because while certifications are knowledge-based, the hands-on experience that you get out of your own personal projects, your background experiences, previous jobs, those are the things that are really gonna set you apart and get you an actual job in malware analysis. All right, so next let's go into salaries for malware analysts. The average salary based on Glassdoor is about $75,000 per year with a low of $42,000 and a high of $134,000 per year. These numbers are based in the United States. So like I mentioned in every video as a disclaimer, it really depends on the cost of living in your area, wherever, whatever company, the size of the company, the sector that you're working in, the certifications that you have, the security clearances that you might have, the levels of experience that you have. So there's so many different things that can go into this. And I definitely wanna let you guys know that because, because you don't wanna sell yourself too short. If you're seeing this number and you already have years and years of experience doing this job you likely will be making a lot more than the average but as someone who's coming in you may also be able to leverage this average to get a more competitive salary even if you are in your early career so honestly this number could be arbitrary there may be a malware analyst that is making way more than this there may be someone who started out in their early career already at the average salary so you know it's all arbitrary honestly and i think that these salaries that are found online are really useful as a guiding post but not necessarily as a set in stone number that needs to be this or that all right, so that's it for this video. I hope you guys found it helpful. Let me know in the comments below any other video topics or cybersecurity careers that you might want me to touch on. And I will definitely be happy to add that to my backlog. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications. I post videos every Wednesday at 2 p.m. and Sundays at 12 p.m. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.